Hello and welcome again to this One Identity Manager video series. In this small video series, I like to talk about the One Identity Manager API. In detail, we'll start with which tools to use to write code, and we will end with high sophisticated scripts. In the first couple of videos, I like to show you which tools to use and how to create from a principle a script. Once this is done, we will talk a little bit about performance optimization. This video fits best to the One Identity Manager basic trainings for partners or for customer, where you can as well learn how to use the API. I wish you a lot of fun now with the script, and I really hope you enjoy what we did for you. Before I want to start talking about the API, it might make sense to show you which tools could be used to develop code in Identity Manager. First of all, there is the Object Browser. In the Object Browser in Identity Manager, I can select the script table, which is Dialog Scripts. You can see it on the left side. And then I can select one of these scripts, which are stored there. For example, I can search for the script that builds the internal name. That means the display name of a person object. Therefore, I go to Filters. I tell the system script name is like internal. I start filtering and I get two scripts back. First, the standard script, which is VI built internal name. If I open that and click into the line, you easily can see I can do whatever I want on the keyboard, but nothing happens. The reason for that is a scrum script is always write protected. If I want to see the code completely, I can open the script code here. I can go into the value and I can open the box and the gray color in the background tells me this is a locked script. Again, each standard script is write protected. To get it modified, the first thing I have to do is to copy the standard script and to build something which is nearly same named, but it is custom. And this is, for example, the script build internal name. The way to use this is the same than VI build internal name, but it is custom defined. So there must be a small difference. But what you can see directly at the beginning, if I click into this line and I click on the three dots on the right, then you see this is now with a white background and that means I can add here code to the window. Here we are. Some more things to know. Here in Object Browser, I can edit scripts, I can add code and I get as well syntax highlighting and something like auto completion, which is named IntelliSense if you look in Microsoft tools. But there is one feature that did not exist in the Object Browser and this is the compiler for scripts. I'm not able to change code here and make this code available to be tested in the object browser without to use another tool. If I change the script here, the next what I have to do is I have to run the database compiler and to compile the script code. Reason for that, we are using here an identity manager as customization language, vb.net. And vb.net is a compiler language, so a compilation is necessary. Once I have the script compiled, I can test the scripts right here. For example, I can do that with the standard script in the Identity Manager, which is already compiled. And then I can add here values, for example, perfect Avale. And if this is there, I can run the script and you can see that the display name Avale, Herbig, it's built and could be used. To use the object browser, to develop script code, it's more something you should not do or you will do if there is only a small change in a script that have to be made. The advantage of the object browser is it is very quick and you can easily reach the script and change something. The disadvantage is there is nearly no comfort and you need always other tools like the database compiler before you can test something. Another way to build scripts is designer. Designer, from my perspective, should be your first place if you want to change a little bit script code. We see the same script here, CC build internal name, this time in designer. And one of the first advantages of designer is that this tool separates between custom scripts, that means scripts you can edit, and system scripts, which are not editable, which are just scripts you can use as templates or to get ideas from how to use the API. The same code window exists here as well, and you can click on the right lower of that specific code window to expand it. You see as well the same buttons, and you can then edit the code. A typical designer feature, which makes the whole thing a little bit more comfortable, is that there is a local compiler, and this local compiler allows you to compile locally the script. There is another feature in designer as well, which makes the designer more comfortable than the object browser, and this is the way that the designer allows you to develop your scripts 
far away from the database. Designer loads all scripts from the database into a local copy of the configuration. And with that, you can develop scripts and you can make changes in scripts without impacting all the others working with the same database. Once your script is ready developed, you can run the local compiler, like mentioned, and then you can step to the script tester and you can test your fresh co local compiled script directly here in the designer. And you will see the same results. Surprise, surprise. The good message here is this is only a local modification. And it becomes true if I just commit the script to the database. And once this is done, I compile the database to make that script available. Remember, we have to create DLLs before we can use something that is written in vp.net code here in designer. Two more features I like to show you. One additional comfort feature in designer is that you can as well add code easily using a code library to your scripts. If I open one of these scripts and I enter a new line, I can press F2 and with F2, I get the snippet editor. The snippet editor allows me from the visual basic or the object layer to get templates. I use the object layer, for example, I'm using for a single object, which is this one here, press return and I get a code template, which could now easily modify it to make the whole thing available. Another feature, as you can see here, and as, as it exists in the object browser as well, is the syntax highlighting. And for smaller scripts or fast script changes, designer should be your first choice if you want to do something. A really comfortable way to develop your VP.NET code is to use a Visual Studio or another development tool that allows to work with solution files. Therefore, on my machine, there is Visual Studio installed. To use Visual Studio with Identity Manager, I have to start a solution, which is named the System Debugger. I step into my Start menu. From there to All Apps, I'm looking for the Program folder, and in the Program folder, I find System Debugger. System Debugger, it's not an AXE like the other tools. It is just a solution, and it works only if there is something on your environment installed, which is able to work with solution files. I click the system debugger solution and I get Visual Studio open. Once Visual Studio exists, the first thing I have to do here is to download all the scripts from the database. Therefore, I hit F5 and have to wait until a login mask comes up and asks me for some credential. Once this login mask exists, I have to sign in with my system user. And the first question to answer is if I like to download all the scripts stored in the database. I click yes, I get the download wizard. I can download everything, but to get everything, I have as well to check the box export locked scripts because you can disable scripts in the identity manager database. I click on OK and I get all scripts that exist in my database downloaded and stored in local files on my hard disk. Reason for that. Any of these development editors can only work with local files. I click OK again. And the next question I get is if I want to reload all the files that was modified in the background outside the Visual Studio. And yes, of course, I want to reload all. If I don't do that, the next thing I have to do is to completely insert all missing references to all parts of scripts that was in the one identity manager database. Nobody wants to do that. And so reload all after I downloaded scripts from the database. It's always the only valid and right answer. Now my visual solution is ready to work. And I can, for example, open customer scripts, which is normally an empty file if your installation is an initial installation. But in my very specific installation, you can see there are several scripts in there. All of them starts with the prefix CCC that points out that these are custom defined scripts. To use a Visual Studio is from a comfortability perspective, the best option. 